What if I told you that this was a real dinosaur egg? Want to know what's inside? Well, in this episode, we're going to find out. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Hi, I'm Amy, and this is the Rock of the Day. So it looks like there's cement on the front. And it's also kind of black here and here, but then if you flip it to the other side, it's like all red. So I wonder what different like types of rock and if there are any different types of rock on this. It looks kind of like eroded. There are a bunch of different layers and it's been cracked. So I wonder how old it is. Hey, Ethan, can you tell me more about this rock? Thank you, Amy, for introducing this rock to all of us. Amy noticed some pretty important things. The different layers on the outside of the rock and the different colors. And then right in the middle, it kind of looks like it's covered or maybe filled with something that looks like cement. Well, it's not cement, or at least I hope it's not. You've seen this sample before. Remember episode 54? This magical sample was given to Boston College as a gift, and it instantly became one of the most special rocks that we have in our collection. That's because this is a real dinosaur egg. Look how round it is. And those layers that Amy noticed on the outside are the eggshell. And the colors represent the different minerals that replaced the original eggshell during the fossilization process. Now, every time I tell somebody that this is a dinosaur egg, I get the same question. Everybody wants to know what's inside. Is there a baby dinosaur? Is there nothing at all? Or maybe it's not a real egg after all. I want to know that too, but I don't want to crack it open and ruin it at the same time. Now, I have a paleontologist friend, and she has a way to solve the mystery of what's really inside this remarkable object. Come with me and let's find out. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Ethan. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for having us. Hey, everybody. I'm with Jesse Maizano. Jesse is the lab manager at the CT scanning facility here at the University of Texas in Austin, Texas. And, Jesse, we brought this unusual object. Yeah, take a look. We're pretty sure it's a dinosaur egg. And every time I show this to somebody, they all have the same question. They want to know, what's inside? Is there maybe a baby dinosaur in there? And you can help us answer that question, right? Yes, we can. How do you do it? So we use x-rays and rotation to take a series of radiographs through the specimen. So we'll be able to tell you if there's a baby dinosaur in this egg. All right, we can do this right now today? Absolutely. Go. All right, let's get started. All right. So Jesse, tell me, uh, how did you get interested in paleontology and scanning fossils to begin with? What got you into the geosciences? Okay, well, like every child in the universe, I love dinosaurs. <laughs> it all starts with the dinosaurs. It all starts with the dinosaurs. <laughs> and those of us who became paleontologists as adults simply never outgrew that life. Yeah, I guess so. So I actually started college in a very different major, fashion. Really? And my senior year, I realized I was kind of bored. Then I decided to just go for it and follow my heart. So I changed my major to geology. Okay. And never looked back. Okay. So, Ethan, welcome to UTCT. Thank this you. is where the magic happens. <laughs> okay. We've been doing this for 26 years. Wow. We scan everything and anything that a researcher wants to look inside of non-destructively. So, Lucy was here for two weeks back in 2008. Wow. We've scanned half a dozen Stradivarius violins, and we've scanned a bunch of Apollo moon rocks. So, world-class specimens come through our door and hopefully this is another one of them. Wow, so, so not just fossils, you scan all kinds of things in here. We scan all kinds of things. Wow, that's so yes. cool. So for your scan, Matt Colbert, who is right here, let me introduce you. Hi. He nice will be doing you. your nice scan. You. Okay, so what happens here? Okay, so here's where we mount the specimen for scanning. So you're kind of going to make like a new little nest for our dinosaur eggs. Exactly, so it's nice exactly. and happy and staying still. <laughs> And here's our CT scanner in here Whoa. in this large cabinet. This is huge. 
Yeah, this is about 30,000 pounds of lead and steel, this cabinet. Wow. All designed to keep the x-rays inside so we stay safe outside. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, this is it. All right, so here's a turntable. I'm putting the egg on it. X-rays are going to be coming out of a little window here and being picked up, recorded on this detector bank here. And while the object spins 360 degrees, and we gather x-rays. Oh my goodness, so you guys, we're about to find out right now if there's actually something inside that egg. Are we ready to go? We are ready to go. Let's do this. So, so there's the egg. There's the egg. Unfortunately, it's such a dense object that we don't really have as much um, flexibility as we normally would. Yeah. But um, we'll give it the old college try here. Good. We're at a university after all. That's right. <laughs> Are you surprised how dense it is? Well, I got worried. We've scanned some dinosaur eggs before uh, a long time ago. We had to use high energy. So this is going to be a long scan, but it's going to go into the night. Yep. And, uh, and so tomorrow we'll come back yep. and hope for, the best. hope for baby dinosaur. Hope for a baby dinosaur. Hey, Jesse. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, well, I'm great. So, egg is out of the scanner. Yes. And you're going to show us what you found. So, the data is a series of slices, digital slices, through the egg, going from the top of the egg to the bottom. So, kind of, we'll be sort of looking at it like we'll that? Through it. Yes, exactly. Okay. Got exactly. it. Exactly. So, that's what we have loaded up here. So, I'm just going to proceed slowly through the slices. So, <clears throat> to orient you what CT data mean, they're always grayscale, and the different grayscales correspond to different densities within the sample. So the Density. Density. Okay. So, the lighter grayscales are the denser materials. So, that's the eggshell we're looking at right here. That's the actual that's eggshell? the eggshell. Oh, my mm -hmm. gosh. On the outside. All yep, right. Yeah. And then this is the matrix that is filling the egg. Okay. okay. So, I'm going to proceed further. That's more eggshell that's been pushed down inside. So right. the good news is this does appear to be a real fossilized egg. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is a real egg. This is a real egg, yes. Oh. It is definitely a real fossilized egg. Okay. And that's because it's got the eggshell buried down inside. I'm gonna go a little bit further. That's all eggshell. Little bits of eggshell that, that buried inside. Oh my gosh. Yes. So probably when it was fossilized, pressure from sediments burying the egg crushed it, pushed these fragments of eggshell down inside. Okay. That so makes that's sense. that's what we're seeing there. And we're continuing through. And unfortunately. That's all there is. Getting inside. towards the very, very back, looking for like a little dinosaur Ooh, skeleton. Sorry. So oh the good news goodness. is it's a real fossilized egg. Yep. The bad news is whatever was inside does not appear to have survived the fossilization process. Because it's so fragmented, there is a slim chance that whatever was inside hatched and went on and to live. And that's why it's not yeah. here okay. anymore. The majority of fossilized eggs that are found don't contain an embryo. Okay. So it's unusual for there to be an embryo preserved oh, inside. Oh, okay. Wow. Jesse, this is absolutely stunning. I'm not done. You're not done? I'm not done. I haven't shown you the best part, which is this three-dimensional visualization. That's it. That's it. That's so, our egg. See that little part right yeah. there? That's this here, right? That is. Yes. So, well, this is a three-dimensional rendering that is based on the CT data. And one thing that I can do is digitally cut into it. So now we're digitally cutting in. and Somewhere through the middle. That's right. And so here again, we see these fragments of eggshell yep. inside. Wow. Another thing that you can do once the specimen has been digitized with CT, you can actually print it in three dimensions. So really? You, yes, you can. With uh, 3D printing, you can actually take a file generated from the CT data and print a replica or a copy of it in plastic, in gypsum, and metal. So it's really helped with educational outreach of these precious specimens that most people won't encounter otherwise. 
Jesse, this has been so amazing being with you. Thank you so much for being part of Every Rock Has a Story. We'll see you guys back in the studio. Okay, guys, that was so cool. Definitely a bummer that there wasn't a baby dinosaur in there anymore, but at least we know it's a real dinosaur egg. Now, let's welcome Amy back into the studio and see what she thought. Hey, Amy, how you doing? So now that you know what The Rock is, what did you think of the story? I can't believe that there wasn't that many dinosaur inside of it because once you were like, this is a dinosaur egg in the beginning of the video, I was like totally prepared to have a baby dinosaur inside. But it's still really cool that we got a dinosaur egg and the shell and like the little bit that's like white was the actual egg. It's like, that's really cool. Yeah, I still kind of can't believe that this is a real dinosaur egg. I was worried it was going to be a fake, to be honest, but it is absolutely a real egg. So what was the coolest thing you saw? The coolest thing was when they showed the scan and it had, you could like see like in high like detail of all the different like little cracks and it was the exact same as the rock. So I think that's really like high tech technology. Yeah, high tech for sure. And I got another question for you. Have you ever seen one of these 3D printers that we talked about? We have some in our school library. Well, if you could get the file from our scan, would you be interested in making a 3D print of the dinosaur egg? Yes. Well, that's awesome because we're going to provide a link to that digital file that anyone can download and print at home or in school. So Amy, thank you so much for being a part of this episode. It's been so great having you. Collecting a sample like this amazing fossil egg is just the start of the fun, the excitement, and the mystery of science as we work to unlock the secrets hidden inside all things like this rock. Sometimes you find what you expect and sometimes you don't. Either way, that process of scientific discovery is what all scientists find so exciting. Think about it. We were the very first people who have ever seen inside that egg since it hatched 70 million years ago. Today's technologies and laboratories do allow us to see the distant past at ever higher levels of detail. And in our next episode, we'll get to visit my lab here at Boston College. For now, I want to thank Jesse again for welcoming us into her laboratory. And I want to thank Amy, who got this thing started with all of her careful observations. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Setting up a scan, there's always a compromise of what you're doing and how you're setting it up. It's kind of like when you've got an old-fashioned TV, you sort of set the brightness, set the contrast to get the image just right for what That's you're trying right. to deal with. You guys know what Monica Sellis? Tennis player? Taki! That was her grunt. Taki! Source, which I think looks like a Klingon warship. <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> it's so sleek right. and yep. beautiful. <laughs> <That's right. laughs>